All right, folks, welcome to big business. That's what we're going to be learning about. We're going to be learning about how big business shaped the United States. Because one thing before we start on the notes, I want you to think about. Think of the United States almost as like a person, okay? Start off as a baby, then you become, you know, 6th, 7th, 8th grade, you're growing up, then you become a teenager, then you're a young person with more responsibilities going out into the world. The United States is growing. It's spreading out in area, and it's changing the way that it lives. When we started with the revolution, we were mainly a farming country. And you're going to see how things are going to be changing. Okay, So keep that in mind that you're looking at the growth of America. This is natural resources, transportation, and industrial development after the year 1877. So we're going to be talking about the advances in transportation that linked, connected resources, products, and markets. The resources have to get to the markets. They have to become products. How is that all going to happen? So, number one, your question is, what did railroad companies need to build tracks and trains? Pretty simple, right? What did they need? What is this that's happening right here? What did they need? They needed steel. Okay? Number two. The first transcontinental railroad was completed in 1869. You remember learning about that in our earlier section. Just 24 years later, there were four more railroad lines that crossed the country. Okay? These lines are continuing to increase. Look at that. This is 1870 right there. That's 1890. That's how much it changed that quickly. The U.S. now had more than 160,000 miles of track road. So what are you going to write down? Okay, how would this change people's lives? If you were living here, how is it going to change compared to if you had lived here before? Do you, are you connected to everybody else? And now later on, yes, you are connected. Railroads, whoop, let me close that, I apologize, were the fastest and cheapest way to transport goods. The fastest and cheapest way. Remember, if you need to, all you need to do is pause me, write down the information, and then hit play again. Okay? Railroads linked cities, farms, factories, and mines all over the United States. That's what's so important. You need to connect these things. A farm's no good growing all that wheat if you can't get it to market, right? Number six, what did rail, new railroad lines do for the U.S.? New railroad lines allowed businesses to make more money and help the U.S. economy to grow. Businesses made more money. You get more businesses. People working for them. People are going to get paid, right? Railroads allowed natural resources to be moved to eastern factories like iron ore to steel mills in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So when you hear Pittsburgh, think the football team. What is it? The Steelers. Why? Because that's where they made steel, okay? Example there, we've got Pittsburgh. See, they're making steel there. A lot of fire, a lot of heat. Railroads allowed for finished products to be transported to national markets, such as textiles and clothing from New England. What we mean by finished product, think you can start with something like cotton, but then it needs to be spun, and it's got to be turned into shirts, jackets, other things like that. A leather jacket, leather from the cow, okay? So the cow is not your jacket. You need somebody who's going to make the jacket, the finished product. Big businesses located or placed their factories near rivers and railroads to move resources and finish goods to market. So things grew up around transportation. Like when I go to upstate New York and I'm going along, say, the Hudson River, you're going to see the train tracks along it, and you're going to see these old factory towns, and a lot of them have 
died over the years because we're the, not the same country that we were in 1877 or 1900 or 1920 when these places were flourishing. And that's some of the change in the country. Okay? And you see on your paper here, you have two number eights. So think of one of them as number nine. Okay? Examples of that stuff moving copper and lead. We have Pittsburgh. That's for the steel, right? They allowed for finished products to be shipped to national markets such as textiles from New England. This is just a look. You can see here in 1835, that's how much railroad tracks. By 1890, you see how much it has changed and increased. Okay?